Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of The Good Doctor. Today I'm here with Dr. Mark Mueller and we're going to be talking about allergies. Welcome to the program, doctor. I'm happy to be here. First question is, what are allergies and how do we know that we have them? Well, uh, this is a big question and an important question because I experience in my practice that uh, so many, come to, many people come to me and say, I have allergy. It's clear, I have allergy. Or the doctor said, I have allergy. And uh, many people think they have allergy, but you can only know that you have allergy when you do a test, a proper allergy test, that proves that you are allergic to this or that substance. Another question about allergies. Is asthma considered an allergy? There is extrinsic and intrinsic asthma. Um, the intrinsic asthma is not an allergy. The extrinsic asthma is an allergy. Extrinsic means it comes from outside. What about intrinsic? Intrinsic. Oh, is that like ge genetic? Am I born with asthma? Yeah, uh, intrinsic is a big question mark actually. Okay. Uh, we don't know exactly where it comes from. It's very uh, uh, much related to stress and uh, nervous system. So what happens in the, in the, the dynamics at the uh, molecular level, at the, 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 the physiological level that someone gets an allergy? Uh, an allergy is actually a, a not so proper function of our immune system. Mm. Uh, our immune system is, is a system that is basically uh, made to keep us clean from inside. Mm -hmm. So everything that enters our system, enters our body, and doesn't belong to us will be detected by that immune system. Fascinating. And that is actually uh, uh, very important, of course, so that we don't get infested from bacteria or anything. Yeah? any dirt that enters. And uh, now, somebody who has allergic reactions uh, reacts to these particles in a different way than mm. usually. Usually, we have these antibodies, they find everything that doesn't belong to us, they connect with it, and then they connect that to a cell, and the cell eats it, and then it vanishes in the lymphatic system. But the allergic person also finds the substance and then connects it to a cell that produces a big hoo-ha, it produces histamine. Yeah, and histamine makes a big inflammation. And this inflammation reaction goes along with redness and swelling. And redness and swelling is not so good if it is in the middle of the nose. Yeah? Mm. First of all, the nose gets blocked and secondly, the nose starts running. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone who has a runny blocked nose comes to me and says, I have allergy. Well, that's not the case. So, so not is everything is an allergy. Exactly. So this needs to be found out. How do we find it out? In making an allergy prick test. Okay. When you say the prick test, so mm -hmm. what, what is it? You prick someone's finger or no, they... No, we, we, we actually use the, the arm. There we have space enough to make little pricks in the skin. Mm -hmm one by one, then we put a number on it, yeah, and then we can control after 30 minutes if the person is allergic or not. Okay, so let's say that someone does have an allergy and you've gone through this, uh, this test, the prick test, what are some of the remedies? Is uh, it med medicinal? Is it uh, uh, you would advise them to stay away from you know, the substances that causes the allergy? The, the next step is that once you know that you are allergic and you have ruled everything else out, then you need to know a lot about allergies to, under, on, to understand about allergies to make a proper treatment. And in general, an allergy stands on three pillars. Number one is that you must have this genetic uh, predisposition, as we call it, that you would have this allergic reaction as I described it. Number two is, however, let's say you, you have the genetics for that your parents were allergic and you might become allergic as well. Mm -hmm. But you're not exposed to any allergen. Right. For example, you're living somewhere on the sea or on an island where there is no allergen around. Yeah? So you might not become allergic. So genetics plays a factor, but not necessarily, but it, it does exactly. play a factor. If it's not genetic, the environment plays a factor. It has to be there. Without yeah. environment, no allergy. Right. Yeah. What about food? Food? Well, you know, food goes through the intestine. Yeah. yeah. So you need to have any, let's say, any uh, uh, compromised mucosa in the intestine so that food 
molecules can enter in a way, or food stuff can enter in a way so that it will be detected as an allergen. What are the cures? Let's look first at the allergen. So most likely, or hopefully, it is an allergen that you can avoid. If you, can, if you are ma managing to avoid the allergen, you're already, uh, you, you did already one third of the therapy. About 90% or more of my patients have a dust mites allergy. Mm. Yeah? Dust mites, we know, they, this is a powder that comes from the mattress, is in the bed, so we inhale it while we are in the bed. So uh, because we are exposed during that time, we can become allergic. So how can you uh, minimize that exposure? For example, uh, by buying an air purifier. Yeah? So that would be one part. The second part would be to seal the mucosa. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about the nose because we are talking about allergic rhinitis, I think. Right. Um, to seal the mucosa in the nose would be to cure, for example, any sinusitis that is present. Uh, and that can be with surgeries or with, with uh, uh, any intervention that is needed to, um, to make the climate in the nose as best as possible. Is that a severe case that uh, no, we need to... Usually it's going hand in hand. Okay, and then when we talk about surgery, for again, the, 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 t the moment you use the word surgery, everybody panics. They think All right, it's good. Procedure. It's a very small procedure. A pr small procedure. Is it, it doesn't even mean that you need that. It, it's not necessary. But I, I was, it just came first in my mind. But actually, the first thing you do is uh, just uh, taking nasal spray, for right. example. Then you can take a nasal spray that is anti-inflammatory. So. Mm -hmm. That would, be, that would contain the same substance that you put on a mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. When you have that mosquito bite, you put a cream on it and the, and the mosquito bite vanishes. The same substance can be in a nasal spray. You spray it in the nose and the inflammation goes away. And then you can take pills, so-called antihistamines, right. that have an effect that this histamine will not be produced. So if you take that antihistamine before you are exposed, then you have less reaction. Third point then, would be to, uh, uh, to vaccinate against that allergen that you have detected. And there are vaccinations available where you can put a uh, low concentration of uh, mixture containing that allergen under the tongue. Mm -hmm. Or in former times we did it with injections, subcutaneous injections. And uh, you have to do that vaccination, unfortunately, for a longer period. There are fast uh, treatments now available that are probably nine months or, or, or one year, mm -hmm. but uh, usually it's a period of two years, two to three years that you need to treat. And then afterwards, if it is effective, you have, you're free of allergies for the next 15 to 20 years. Well, for anyone who has an allergy, as the good doctor stated, there are steps that you need to take. It is something you don't have to live with. It is curable. And of course, um, allergies, as, as again it was explained, uh, is not something that will live with you forever. Uh, if you do have questions on this subject matter, please tweet us, post it on our Facebook page, or leave comments below our website. Thank you very much for this okay, conversation, again. and thank you for watching The Good Doctor on easyliving.com, where we find anything and everything lifestyle.